Good afternoon. You guys doing all right? Yeah, how are you? Absolutely. Clayton, a lot of new faces in the secondary, at least, you know, for, with backup roles. How are those new guys progressing? And overall, with the secondary, how are they doing in, one, replacing Jalen, and mm -hmm. two, trying to replace the production he got from those spots last year? Yeah, we're definitely excited about all the new faces that are, that are in the defensive backfield. Uh, obviously, uh, we have Devonnie Reed um, from Central Michigan. He's doing a really good job of just trying to step into the role. Uh, Jalen Foster is about a size 18 shooter field. That's it's very rare to find that you know that size. So uh, I think Devonnie's doing it, doing it in his way and his personality. I'm very proud of how he's doing that as well. We have some freshmen that's, that's come in and really uh, showcase some talent, and we, we're super excited about that as well. Clint, I know you kind of preach team defense mm -hmm. from top to bottom. Just where do you feel like you are in that process now in terms of playing team defense two or three weeks out from the season starting? Yeah, right now we just kind of hope that it's still ascending and going up. And as far as just the way we, the guys are playing together, they're having fun. You know, we think this day 12 or 13, and they're still having the same amount of fun they had on day one or two. Uh, we're proud of that as a staff, and we just want to keep keep preaching team defense because we know it takes all 11 of us to, to have a successful Saturday in our stadium or any opponent stadium. Uh, we're very happy with, with the things that we're doing. We're having good days and bad days, good plays and bad plays. So – but it's all about coming together and understanding that it takes all of us to, to be successful. We've had a lot of players here this week and talking about how much fun your scheme is to play and how it creates opportunities for individual plays, all that. What's your kind of take on that and kind of putting guys in position to make plays? Well, it, that also comes with just being here year two, understanding the conference, understanding the coach that I'm going against, that we're going against, understanding our, our guys' skill set, and got to give them some credit as well of learning the stuff because – I mean, at times, I mean, we didn't slow down the install at all. We basically, day one of uh, spring ball was basically the entire, you know, UNC Chopper Hill playbook. Uh, from from up, By time day three, they, pretty much everything was in. But they, they took the challenge and they wanted, they wanted more. Uh, there was one day we decided to not install and they were kind of upset. So that kind of gets us hype as coaches just to continue feeding them and challenging them and make sure they understand what's going on. But the defense can't be fun uh, if you – Understand your role, and now you can use your instincts and your and your uh, intuition to go out and make plays. But if you don't know the playbook, it's not fun. So you still got to learn the playbook in order for it to be fun. Mm -hmm. Clayton, we've heard a lot of guys talk about Nicky Minwari and yep. how strong he's come on as just a freshman. I guess just what is it about him that's that's made him been able to make an impact at least through mm -hmm. fall camp? And I guess just you know how realistic is it that we we might see a good bit of him this year? Uh, I will say that Nick and you know a couple other guys themselves have also stood out. But since you're specifically asking about him, uh, he's he's the kind of guy who's he's a tall guy, he's a big guy who can run, and, and on top of that, the, the the key is can you put it all together and can you be a football smart guy? Can you understand football situations? And I think his high school coach, Coach Brand at Irmo, has done a really good job of just getting him ready. And his defensive back coach there, I mean, he's a kind of ahead of the curve when it comes to learning. And a lot of times that's going to put you ahead of a, a couple other guys. But then when you're gifted with talent and size and speed and jumping ability and catching ability, keep on. I can keep going on and on and on. But that just makes a complete player. But he has, you know, he still has a long way to go as a, as a, as a player. Uh, but you definitely will see him at least on special teams and playing some defense this year for sure. We're excited about him a lot. How have you seen Debo Williams grow from last mm -hmm. year to this year? Well, the good thing when when you're part of growth is sometimes it's mental and physical. I will say now he's, he understands the defense a lot more. He understands how to use his his strengths and his weaknesses to his advantages. He's a physical football player. He's had some really big hits this fall camp. Um, the ones that you, you – you're glad he's on your team. You know, I'm glad he's in the linebacker room. Um, he's a great guy, but I think that he is doing a really good job. He's, his role is going to increase. He's going to be a player for us this fall, and I'm excited to see him on the field. Clayton, from your perspective, how has Spencer Rattler improved yeah. since, you know, first day of spring practice? How has he improved? I will say he obviously is seeing things a lot quicker. He has a – I mean, as far as talent-wise, he's – I mean, you can always get better. I do believe that he was a guy who he wanted to get used to the defense. I can tell at about day four, I said, okay, I have to start lying to him a little bit more on defense so he, he's not going to pick me apart every single day. But he's making us better as defense because if you just give him a look, he's going to take it, he's going to complete the pass, and they're going to move the chain. So he's making us as a defensive staff – and football players understanding when you're going against a guy that rate, you have to be um, savvy and deceptive and all that kind of stuff. But he's improving every single day, and I'm excited for him. 
And Clayton, um, you played in the in the NFL, and mm-hmm. usually or often there's fans at those practices. Um, you know, you guys, college football usually doesn't have fans at practices. A, what's the difference? And B, would you like to see fans allowed at some practices or scrimmages? There's times, for, uh, there's time and place for everything in life. You know what I mean? So, I truly believe that uh, it's probably not a place to have uh, fans here because there's no telling who will be there recording stuff. And now with social media, I'm not a big fan of it at all because I watch, I get on the internet now and I see, um, you know. Tuyo, what's his name from the Dolphins, threw a touchdown pass to uh, to, the, to the Tyreek Hill, and then I look, read the comments, and it's all negative. So I don't think this, I don't think fans should be at practice. If they are, there should be no recording, kind of like a golf tournament, and then that's different. But because things, they kind of, it's you don't, you're not gonna get anything from it. It's it's not good. So I don't think so. Clayton, as you kind of go into the second scrimmage, yep. what do you want to see from your your defense overall and just what are some areas mm-hmm. you'd like to see improve from scrimmage one and scrimmage two? Well, I will say the main thing, I just want to make sure we continue operating at a at a high rate because we play here shortly. Um, in regards of just, you know, getting in and off the field, tackling, make sure we're taking the great angles to the football and, and really communicating better, just getting getting ready, getting game ready, uh, getting, you know, trying to get ourselves ready to play. It's, it's going to be here before you know it. And just a couple of scheme things that we may may talk about as far as if you see this, expect this. And just because of this getting close to the game, you want to kind of get our guys in that mind. Um, obviously, keep flying to the ball and keep playing good team defense. Um, just this Saturday, just to, to see how the guys play. I'm excited about it. Uh, we've heard a couple of players talk about it, a, a big emphasis on trying to stop the run more this year. I know that mm-hmm. was a big struggle last year. Mm-hmm. What does that kind of look like in practice? And how do you kind of translate trying to stop the run yeah. from maybe a practice or a film room into the game? Well, we just preaching team defense, trying our best to understand that it's not just the D line, it's not just the 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 defensive backs. We had 24 turnovers last year, and that's not just because the DBs. We had three, you know, a couple picks by edge guys, and linebackers have picks. So it's 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 all about the team defense, and and obviously how the game flowing. But right now we're working on it every single day and trying to improve. But I think the most important is that we have to understand that it takes all 11 to do those kind of things. Clayton, you guys were really good at forcing turnovers last mm-hmm. year. How, from year to year, how replicable is that to rely on turnover turnovers from year to year? I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, but, <laughs> but we're gonna talk about them. We're gonna, you know, when they like we drop one today, like we have to have those in the red zone for sure. I do believe that our guys understand it. It was a big, I mean, it was a big deal last year of us getting turnovers, and you know we're gonna we're gonna harp on it. We're gonna emphasize it. I mean, it's it's a it's it's a definitely a big undertaking to get that done again. And I guess home and road splits defensive last year, you guys played a little bit better at home than you did on the road. What does this team have to do to be better on the road and get some of those big road games this season? Coach Beamer alluded to a lot of those things. A lot of those away games were just how we started. I believe that, you know, we have to start games a little bit smoother and and, and probably not as out of control as a football club. And I think that if we just go out there and, and play our game and keep the game within the first quarter, and then I think I, I think you'll see an improvement on the road from this football team. How would you describe a, a good culture within a football program, and what do you think is the most important part to, to get there? Uh, describing a culture of a football team is is exactly what you you know. If you come to practice, it's the things you see and feel. I had a couple of scouts tell me today that they felt the energy. They they feel guys uh, running around and having fun and. And really, as a f- inside the building, it's the everyday grind. When it's the probably the thirtieth meeting, the fifteenth walk through, how attentive are your guys? That's how, as a football coach on the inside, how I would assess that. From the outside, you really can't assess it unless you know you come to practice every single day. But uh, the most important piece is, hey, to put the pressure on Coach Beamer, but he kind of sets the tempo of, the, of that, and then it starts with your coaches, and it goes down to your players, and then the support staff and everyone in the building. If one person is off on the culture, on the cultural message and, the, and you know our message, it can just navigate through the seats. It can start here and then end up up there, and there's no reason, there's no telling how it got there. So you have to buy in. It's, it's a total buy-in from everybody that's in the building. It's not, it's not easy. Clayton, we hear a lot about Cam Smith and, and how good he can be. I guess mm-hmm. just if you had to, how would you kind of describe Cam or characterize him if you had to? Who is Cam? Cam Smith. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cam Smith, uh, just a flat-out cover corner that can is real sticky on routes. He can 
you know, he can play the, the long ball, the short ball. He can come up and tackle. He's not that big of a guy, but um, he plays, you know, he plays one of the hardest positions to play in football in all the sports. And he's doing a good job of it and just, just continue to hope that his, he uses his team around him because obviously we can, we can, we can uh, have, that's a good advantage to us to have that kind of guy. And also it's good to have another guy beside him, Darius Rush and Marcellus Dow to help compete him, help him compete. And then our wide receivers have made him a lot better too this year. And so has Spencer. Kind of stick with the individual player theme. What yep. have you seen from Zach Pickens kind of helping that defensive tackle group? And I, was, I know that was a big pull for you guys to get him back here for another year. Yep. Uh, Zach Pickens has been like the little, the big role model for some of the younger guys that we have in that room with Coach Lindsey. But Zach is a leader by example. Uh, he's always, I don't think he's ever been on the list since the day I've been here, which that's impressive for a guy his stature and the guy of his, uh, you know, just his, his notoriety that he has. But I think what he's doing, he's working hard. He's trying to improve uh, every, every, every small thing of his game. He has an opportunity to, to, to do some big things, and we're excited about Zach as well. Hey, Coach, you mentioned uh, team defense and the, pl the playbook and being more comfortable a few times today. Um, is it safe to think, is your goal there for players to maybe be more proactive instead of reactive and kind of a, a twitchy or rely on instinct out there? Is that, is that your goal? Is that what no, you're saying? That's not um, very similar, but mainly what I'm trying to say is in order to have fun in anyone's defense, you have to learn the defense. It's kind of the Phil Jackson, you know, once you learn this system, you have an opportunity. Now you can use your own instincts and your natural abilities once you learn the ins and outs of the system. And so our guys, they learned a little piece of that last year and how much fun it can be once we get rolling. So this year, they were locked in from January to learn different, multiple positions because they know that in the system, we're able to put you in any different places. But once you learn it, you can now use your own flavor with it and then we can have fun with it. So at the end of the day, study to play well. <laughs> Y'all good? Thank you.